so welcome everyone to part 1 of unit 4 so the syllabus for unit 4 is concrete mix design in which we have principles methods statistical quality control concrete geology maturity concept IS code method ACI method and then uh, we have admixtures in, used in concrete uh, we will reduce the topic functions classification and IS specifications so in this lecture I will be covering the admixture part okay so let us start so usually as we have already covered in our previous uh, lectures that we use special cement for special purposes okay so instead of using special cement what we can use we can use additives or uh, admixtures to achieve the same desired properties okay so uh, admixtures can be defined as a material it can be defined as a material other than cement water and aggregate that is used as an aggregate of concrete so the ingredient of concrete and is added to the batch immediately before or during the mixing okay so on the other hand the additive is a material which is added at a time of grinding the cement clinker at cement factory for so you must have uh, studied in the manufacturing of cement you know um, so what we you we, we grind the uh, clinker and then we add some material for example gypsum we added okay, to prevent the flat setting of cement so uh, the basic difference between admixtures and additive is that admixtures are added immediately before or during the mixing uh, on the other hand additives are added uh, at a time of grinding of cement okay so you should remember these differences so concrete uh, should be workable finishable strong durable watertight and wear resistant these properties can be achieved by using admixtures okay so they are used to reduce the cost of concrete construction to achieve certain properties which are difficult to achieve otherwise to maintain the quality of concrete during stage of mixing transporting placing and curing uh, especially in adverse weather conditions and to overcome certain emergencies during the concreting operations okay so one important point uh, which you have to remember is that admixtures are not substitute for uh, good concreting practices they are not a substitute for good concreting practices so if you are uh, if you are just using admixtures and not uh, improving your let's say mixing technique or not uh, mixing uh, as specified by the code or by uh, or uh, you're not placing the concrete properly not curing the concrete properly you will not achieve the desired results okay so ad uh, admixtures are not a substitute for good concreting practices so there are many types of uh, admixtures for example for example we have uh, plasticizers super plasticizers retarders accelerators air and training admixtures pozzolanic dam proofing gas forming then we have air detraining alkali aggregate expansion inhibiting, uh, inhibiting admixtures permeability grouting corrosion bonding micidal gemicidal coloring admixtures so we have a lot of admixtures used currently in uh, concrete technology but we will be covering a few important ones so uh, one more classification can be done uh, for example we have uh, they can be subdivided into chemical admixtures and mineral ad admixtures which are also known as pozzolanic uh, materials so in chemical admixtures we have accelerators retarders super plasticizers air and training agents and there are many but these are few mentioned here and then we have in mineral admixtures we have fly ash, blast fondant slag, silica fumes, rice husk fume, or rice, rice husk ash. So we will start with plasticizers. Uh, they are also known as water reducers. Okay. So as we have already discussed in our previous classes, that different situation uh, require different degree of workability. Okay. So let's say we have deep beams so we have um, water retaining structures with high percentage of steel reinforcement then we have uh, beam column junctions then we have some concrete which has to be pumped okay uh, then we have hot weather hot hot weather concreting 
ready mix concretes etc all of these they have they, they need high workability okay high degree of workability so one traditional method is to use higher percentage of fine aggregates okay or or we can increase the cement content this is the traditional method of improving the workability and one method which is not preferable is adding extra water to work, uh, improve the workability that is a very uh, disastrous method okay because it leads to uh, formation of capillaries formation of cracks uh, shrinkage in concrete okay so the quality of concrete goes down if we if we add water just to improve the workability of concrete so adding water is not the option so what we do is we uh, add chemicals known as plasticizers okay uh, uh, to obtain high workability uh, they uh, reduce the requirement of water between 5 to 15 percent and their use improves improves the strength and durability of concrete and they are, they are comprised of anionic uh, surfactants, non-anionic surfactants, and other products. So the action of uh, plasticizers can be explained in many ways. One of the methods is dispersion. Okay. So the theory is that as soon as we add water uh, to cement, cement particles they flocculate. Okay. This is called flocculation, and uh, what happens is water is trapped between the uh, cement particles and these particles along and they rub with the other uh, particles and they uh, cause friction and this leads to uh, reduction in workability so what happens if we add plus sizes it breaks the uh, this flocculation and helps improving the the workability okay so this is the one of the uh, mechanisms uh, which is called dispersion so uh, now we will discuss super plasticizers. Uh, they are chemically different from normal uh, plasticizers which we have discussed just now, and they reduce the water requirement up to 30%. Okay, and uh, they are usually used for self-leveling, self-compacting, high strength and high performance concrete. As a, we have discussed in our previous lecture, that high performance concrete can be uh, manufactured using super plasticizers okay so they are used here the mechanism is uh, more or less same as the previous one uh, okay these uh, are known as super plasticizers here but in western countries they are also known as high range water reducers high range water re reducers okay so uh, uh, using these uh, chemicals we can get a uh, water cement ratio of, of up to 0.25 and strength up to 120 mega pascal okay as you also also know that uh, if we use slag fly ash or silica fumes okay uh, the workability decreases okay so if we use uh, these chemicals super plasticizers the workability is improved so use of such chemicals has made possible uh, to use slag, fly ash, and silica fumes, which um, which have other advantages. For example, they are waste materials, okay, and they have uh, other properties, cementous properties. Okay. So these are some of the polymer-based uh, super plasticizers available in the market. Okay, so you can just go through them. Okay, uh, and uh, these are their names. So it, uh, now, now we will discuss uh, different chemical known as retarders. So retarder is an admixture which slows down the chemical process of hydration so that the concrete remains in plastic and condition and is workable for longer period of time. Okay. So what, uh, what happens that if the temperature is very high and temperature is very high in some uh, places and if we go uh, at certain depths you know if we dig down down the earth we will uh, find the temperature is very high so underground operations uh, also require uh, retarders so if we use concrete it will set very quickly okay so we have to use these chemicals to slow down the process so that the concrete can be placed 
uh, easily and compact it and then it starts hardening okay uh, it is also useful when we have a centralized batching plant for example we have a single point where the uh, batching is done and concrete is manufactured and it is transported over uh, long distances okay so there also we add retarder so that the concrete does not set while being transported to, to, to over long distances okay so commonly used uh, retarders uh, are calcium sulfate or gypsum uh, starch cellulose uh, cellulose products common sugar uh, salt of acids okay so we can use common salt also so sorry common sugar also and most of these uh, reducing ad uh, water re reducing admixtures also act as retarding uh, agents okay then we have accelerators uh, accelerating admixtures are added to concrete to increase the rate of early strength development okay so this permits earlier remo removal of form work so, for example if we have uh, limited form work and we we require them for different uh, uses then we we can uh, remove them uh, earlier if we have accelerators okay they re reduce the required period of curing okay and they advance the time that a structure can be placed in a service for example uh, for example we have uh, uh, let's say a column we have and we need uh, that column very you know that strength is gained in a very short period of time so in that case we can use accelerators and then we can proceed to other other flow and then we can go on okay. uh, they can be used in uh, uh, emergency repair works okay so in the past uh, one of the commonly used materials has been calcium chloride but what has been found out that uh, using calcium chloride uh, you know is harmful for the for the reinforcements so in rcc where we use steel it is not very useful so it may be used in pcc which is plain cement concrete where we do not use reinforcements okay so soluble carbonates silicates and some of the organic compounds are also used as accelerators okay so there are some accelerators which allow concrete to set in just 5 minutes okay so which is very useful in underwater uh, sorry underwater concreting so there are some accelerators which have very low uh, setting time uh, for the concrete and then it can be used in underwater so next we have air and trailing admixtures so this is one of the very important discoveries of uh, concrete uh 85% of concrete manufactured in north america which includes us and canada is air entrailed see how important it is so uh, air entrailed concrete is made up by uh, made by mixing a small quantity of air entraining agent or by using air entraining cement okay so uh, if we see these are small you know uh, spherical bubbles of size 5 to 80 microns okay 5 to 80 microns small bubbles we have here and there these are called air entrailed concrete so the uh, air entrailing agents are natural wood resins animal and vegetable fat oils then we have various wetting agents like alk alkali salts sulfates and then we have water soluble soaps <laughs> sodium salts okay but most widely used in the world are venesol resin and darex okay you can google them and see what what they are so these are the most widely used air entrailing agents <clears throat> so what effect do they have on properties of concrete so the the, the most important effect we have is increased resistance to freezing and thawing so i have already discussed freezing and thawing so i will just explain with this figure so let's say we have water in this crack and at night it freezes you know uh, when the temperature goes below 0 it freezes so as we know the volume of ice is higher so it it uh, widens the crack okay 
and this cycle repeats uh, itself and then this crack becomes very wide so in concreting structures we have micro cracks and if we have freezing and thawing uh, in that case uh, such uh, air trade concrete concretes are very useful okay that's the reason why uh, they are very famous in north american countries because the temperature uh, in those countries like canada and us is very low okay uh, it goes below zero uh, for most of the time in during winters so they are, they use it very widely uh, also uh, the workability can be improved because obviously we have small bubbles workability can be improved and one of the other uh, uh, effects is reduction in strength the strength is reduced so what happens the this reduction in strength can be offset by using you know better uh, aggregates you know good cement and all those things but yes if we use uh, these agents the strength is reduced a bit so we have some indirect effects for example uh, reduce uh, reduced uh, segregation you know bleeding decrease permeability uh, you know uh, more resistance to chemical attacks sand content reduction then we have good finish uh, cement content required is less uh, less unit weight okay less water content and then we have alkali aggregate reaction is also reduced and then it reduces the modulus of elasticity uh, then we have pozzolanic or mineral admixtures so uh, pozzolanic materials are uh, siliceous or siliceous and aluminous materials which themselves do not do not have any cementitious properties but when uh, they are uh, added in a finely divided manner uh, and they react chemically to give cshs gel for example you must have studied uh, uh, pozzolanic cement okay so we add uh, pozzolana which reacts with cal calcium hydroxide to form cshs gel so in itself it does not have any cementing properties but when exposed to carbon uh, sorry calcium hydroxide it forms Uh, cementous properties these gels okay so okay these materials can be uh, again uh, classified into uh, uh, natural and artificial um, pozzolans okay so in natural we have clay shales okay from chertz uh, some diamond diamond diatomaceous earth volcanic tuffs and pumicides then we have artificial pozzolans like fly ash plus fun and slag silica fumes rice husk ash surki and metak metak kaolin okay so fly ash as we know uh, these are the uh, res residues obtained from you know uh, power plants you must have seen so this is a power plant and we have this uh, res residues so they are generally captured from chimneys of coal fired power plants okay and they uh, include substantial amount of uh, silicon dioxide okay and they have also uh, they also have some toxic uh, chemicals also for example arsenic boron cadmium etc okay so next is silica fumes uh, it is a by uh, product of semiconductor industry okay this is how it is looks like silica fumes uh they are uh, okay uh, they are uh, the terms uh, used in form of fumes for dry silica and other by products also so it has been found that silica fumes improves compressive strength bond strength abrasion resistance you know reduce permeability and other uh, benefits okay so they can be used as admixtures then we have rice husk ash uh, obviously we know that uh, rice husk is a waste material uh, which is uh, left uh, behind the uh, grain of rice 
then we have uh, so these rice husks they are burned and then we we know we have rice husk ash okay so it is used as pozzolanic material in cement to increase the durability and strength and it has silica in it so obviously uh, it has some uh, good properties so when cellulose is uh, cellulose is burned only silica is left and which is grinded to fine powder which is used as pozzolan okay then we have uh, ggbfs uh, ground granulated blast furnace slag we, we have already discussed these things as we know uh, again this is the by product of uh, uh, iron blast furnace when, when we manufacture iron steel so we can uh, uh, see uh, we can uh, so this is a by product of steel manufacturing uh, which is sometimes used as substitute for portland cement so uh, in molten st uh, state the impurities they come at surface and uh, which are removed and this is called slag okay so this can also be used as uh, admixtures so now the, the IS code for the uh, uh, admixtures. So we have IS 9103, uh, which was reaffirmed in 2004. Okay. Uh, so IS 9103 1999 reaffirmed in 2004. So we have uh, so this in this code we usually have the uh, the uh, how it is classified. You know, it classifies the oscillators, starters, all those things which I have always covered. It gives the the classification, and then it gives all the requirements of such uh, admixtures. You know, what are the requirements of such admixtures? All the properties. Then uh, it defines the met uh, methods of sampling of admixtures for test. You know, how we we'll, how we'll be testing these admixtures. You know, then how we will we will be preparing the samples of concrete and all those things. How we'll be performing the uh, proportioning of concrete and all the test, test for bleeding, test for uh, setting time, and all those things. So you should go uh, uh, through this code. Uh, it is readily uh, available on the internet. Just Google it, and you will find it. And you can download it and get, go through the code and read uh, what it says. So. Thank you for listening uh, the lecture. Please go to the go through the Google Forms uh, to ensure your attendance. Uh, if you have any problems and doubt doubts, you can post uh, your questions on Google Classroom. So okay, please go through the forms uh, to ensure your attendance. Thank you.